Well, morning again, friends. Pastor Pete here on a Tuesday morning at the church. Day of new beginnings. Day that I think of as Happy New Year. And you're thinking, it's not January, Pete. And I say, I know, but it always feels like the new year begins for me in the first week of September. And in particular, on a day like today, when the kids go back to school. And that feels new to me. It feels fresh. It feels like a, a new beginning. It feels like we're starting over again. It feels like uh, things that happened in the past are just wiped clean and the, the slate is blank and forward we go. And, you know, I still have this kind of, I suppose it's a, a juvenile remembrance, but I still have this thrill that I don't have to go to school. Uh, pretty bad. <laughs> I went to college and I did university online, of course, to get my Bachelor of Theology as I was being trained at our home church in Thunder Bay. So I've been in school a long time and I'm really glad I don't have to. <laughs> it's, uh, it's somewhat pathetic, but when I see the kids going to school and I see the pictures of your families on Facebook and I think, that's great for them. You don't have to do it. I, I don't know why I still feel that way. But, you know, when I say it's the new year, there is something, as I say, that, that seems fresh because it's like I remember going back to school and it's like, you know, I had this clean new binder. I had, you know, brand new binder paper in my three ring binder. See how old I was? Um, but we had that. We had, you know, new pens and new pencils. I, I can remember when I was younger, new crayons or pencil crayons in my little kit there. And I probably had a, a new lunch bag of some kind and some new clothes that I've been waiting to wear. And it just felt like everything that happened before was behind me. And this was all brand new. And because you got to really begin at the beginning all over again. And, and I hope your kids feel that way. I hope the children here in particular at, at Downsview are encouraged that, you know, whatever difficulties or trouble you had before, especially in these crazy COVID days. I think most children are going back to school in person. I'm uh, sure there's still gonna be the challenges of a million safety protocols. But again, as those vaccination numbers goes up, as our infection numbers continue to drop, certainly the hospitalization numbers continue to go down. I, you know, as, as our protocols stay in place, I, I do, I do pray and, and hope that it will be a good and encouraging and, and frankly a refreshing time to kind of start all over again. You know, there's been many people over the years that talk about people deserving a fresh start. And you know, sometimes that connects to us as Christians when it comes to the whole issue of Christian forgiveness, right? That we've had difficulty and struggles in a relationship or whatever it might be. And you know, someone has forgiven us and we start to study that as Christians and, and hear scriptures like God has taken our sins and thrown them as far as the east is from the west. You remember the old analogy that when you are uh, flying around our globe, if, you're, if you go over the North Pole, suddenly you're going south. And if you come up from the South Pole, suddenly you're going north again, and then south again, and then north again. And when you're going south, you're eventually going to be, meet the north again. But if you go east on your plane, notice you're never going west. You're always going east. If you're traveling west, you're never suddenly changing your direction and going east. You're always going west, which is God trying to say, listen, I didn't take your sins as far as the north is from the south, which is a long way in the north pole to the other bottom pole, the other axis of our planet. But he's saying it's as far as the east is from the west. Those things just never connect. You're never moving towards them again. You, you hear the, the prophet saying that God has taken our sins and thrown them into the deepest sea. Now, surely when those biblical writers were writing that, they didn't understand uh, issues of this trench in the Atlantic Ocean or this deepest point in the Pacific or those kind of things. But they certainly knew that, boy, you wanted to throw something far, far away that you couldn't see it, couldn't find it, wouldn't come up again. You took it out to sea and you put it in the deepest part you can find and that'd be the end of it. And, you know, there's a, there's a, a, a very real freshness to Christian forgiveness. But you know, I was thinking today, when we think about starting all over again, in many ways, that's not just our experience as Christians, but that 
is our experience to become Christians. And you surely have, have thought like I have that the, the adjective born again on Christian is a bit superfluous. We, we don't really need that, right? That, that someone says, are you a born again believer? You think, well, if you're a believer, you're only a believer if you've actually been born again. Well, are you a born-again Christian? Are, are you one of those? And it's come to have certain stereotypes, doesn't it? And yet the, the Bible is very clear that if you're a Christian, you're only a Christian if you've started all over, right back from the beginning, being born all over again. And when Jesus is speaking to Nicodemus in that very well-known passage of John chapter 3, Jesus almost speaks to Nicodemus like, duh, you, you ought to know this. In John chapter 3, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This is verse 2 of chapter 3. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God because no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. So he begins with his pronouncement of who Jesus is, a little bit of inside knowledge, as it were, because I understand that your deeds point to your deity. And Jesus says, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So Jesus moves right past the flattery and doesn't even note it, take note of it, but just says, Nicodemus, here's the bottom line. You must be born again, or else you'll not see the kingdom of God. Well, Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? He's saying, you know, biologically, you're not going to shrink yourself down to this microscopic collection of, of cells that, that grow and grow and grow, and as a child grows, eventually gets born all over again. No, no, he's not saying that. Jesus answered in verse 5, truly, truly, I say to you, and, and notice when Jesus says that, right, truly, truly, the old King James says, verily, verily, it's like this is really important, like listen up, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I say to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes. You hear a sound, but you do not know where it comes from. So it is with everyone who's born of the Spirit. Now Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be? He just, he doesn't understand the whole concept of getting a fresh start right back at your very beginning to the day of your birth, as it were. He says, verse 10, Jesus answered him, are you the teacher of Israel and you do not understand these things? Truly, truly, I say to you, we speak of what we know and bear witness to what we've seen, but you do not receive our testimony. If I had told you earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has descended into heaven except the one who is descended from heaven, the Son of God. Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, and whoever believes in him will have eternal life. Now there's some complicated aspects of that conversation, but I'm trying to draw attention today to Jesus' clear expectation that we would understand, that the teachers of Israel would understand, and therefore the students, that is the people of God, would understand this simple fact. Jesus, the life that we have, that Jesus has for us, is not a remaking of the life that we already have. It is an exchange of. It is exchanging this life for a new life. It is an exchange of that whole nature for a new one. You've got to go back and start all over again. Now, I know that's part of the, the challenge and sometimes the barrier even in evangelism. Because as people have come over the years and have said, listen, God loves you and has a wonderful plan for your life. We're like, oh, that's good. Either he's already living it out or I don't need a different one because my life is just fine. No, but you're a sinner. What sinner? Who says I'm a sinner? You do. No one else tells me that. 
Because we live a bunch of amongst a bunch of other sinners who don't want to acknowledge that, don't want to admit it. And if I don't admit it to you, you won't admit it to me, and I won't hold you accountable for you and your sin, and you won't hold me accountable for my sin. So what's all this about? You know, Jesus having a wonderful plan. I've got a plan. I'm living it out. My plan and my purpose are just fine. Which is why even in our evangelistic zeal and our eagerness that our family members and our friends and frankly others who attend here at Downsview, surely, that we would want them to know the beauty of Christ and the certainty of their salvation. We must go right back to the beginning. We must, just like the first day of school, we got to start all over again. And the wonderful thing is, just like the kids have a blank slate, we have a blank slate when we come to Christ. All of that is wiped away forgetting what lies behind and pressing forward to what lies ahead. That, that's the, the picture of the Christian life. And it's just such a beautiful truth that all of the garbage and the junk and the foolish, stupid decisions I've made, the ridiculous wasting of my time, energy, money, relationship, the waste of a life that I had before Jesus, when he comes to me and he says, listen, you got to start all over again. You know, right back to the very beginning, this figuratively born again, right back to as far back to the beginning as we can go, we're going to start there. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert at those who were, who were afflicted by the, the venom, the bites of those serpents, if they looked, they were healed. Jesus says, this is what it takes. This is what it takes. Being born all over again, how's it all work? Look to Jesus and trust what he shows and what he says. What he shows us himself is the only and the real sufficient and efficient Savior. And what he says is, come now, come follow me. Come follow me and we'll see about seeing other people becoming believers as well. As Mark Dever says, if, if, if you're a Christian, but you're not helping others become a Christian. I just don't know what you mean by the term Christian. A Christian is someone who helps other people find their eternal joy in Christ, which is what it means to be a Christian. And so, you know, Downsview, we're, we're beginning a new season. We're going to be beginning a new sermon series in the coming days. We're going to be beginning as many, quote, programs as we can. We'll see what we can do. We're still thinking about what does some kind of Sunday school look like? What does some kind of children's program, at least on a Sunday morning, look like? We've got to update uh, safety protocols, and we've got to update plan to protect issues, and we've got a lot of stuff that we haven't been able to do in almost two full ministry seasons. But what I know we have, brothers and sisters, is an opportunity to begin at the beginning, you have that opportunity this morning. You're listening to my voice and you haven't surrendered your life to Christ. That's the word, surrender. Look to Christ. Surrender yourself to who he is and what he says and know that we get a blank slate. We get to start all over again, totally fresh with the Lord Jesus Christ. That's very good news, which is what the word gospel means. That's good news. All right, friends. See you soon this week. Cheers.